Okay, so that's the painting I did on um, June the 11th, I think it is. Uh, and in fact, there are going to be some creaking sounds here while I just get up and move around a bit. Um, it's mostly, uh, um, what did I use? Primary yellow, Japanese red to make the sort of orangey colour. Although you won't, you're not going to see that on Zoom because it Zoom tends to wash it out a bit. So at the end, uh, I will be uploading a photograph and I'll share that from my desktop and you'll see what the colours are actually like. And uh, just bear with me for a little bit longer while I just move my desk. I need to get my computer so that I can see what you see because the um, uh, zoom sort of only sort of chops the top and the bottom off. Why the heck it does that? I have no idea. So I've got to just zoom back a bit. Quite a lot, in fact. And, it, and strangely enough, it also distorts the image slightly. It's a nuisance, but uh, it's the best we can get. So I'm going to just check the focus. That is also as good as I can get. So the sky, now this is all completely dry. And what I'm going to do is just sort of try and make it a, a little bit more interesting and also uh, show you how perspective in a sky is also important. Because um, obviously this part of the sky here, down there, is further away than this bit. Because if you're standing here and you look up, that bit of sky is just up above your head. Whereas that's not just above your head, but it's 20 miles away. So this bit of sky along here needs to look as though it's actually coming over the top so that, uh, so that you can actually walk into the landscape. And it, it is one of those things that gives, gives that effect. And um, I've demonstrated this to a few people before, but uh, the best way to describe perspective and how it works is with a piece of paper. I don't know whether this particular type of paper is gonna do it, but if you have a piece of paper, like this. And this is going to sound obvious to a lot of people. Um, this is your horizon, that crease in there, and you're standing here. So you're looking into the landscape like so, and the sky does not go straight up like that. Yeah. The sky comes over you, so you're actually looking into a sort of wedge shape. Hope that makes sense. It should become clear in a minute. If not, I'll go over it again. Uh, a bit later, but a lot of people, when they're painting, they don't think of that. They just think of the sky as like a, um, almost like a, a theatrical backdrop, just dead, like a curtain hanging down. And of course it isn't. So, um, right, so give you an, an idea of what we've got here. We've got, I'm using poppy oil. Now this was painted with poppy oil. And the only reason, there's no mystical reason. Uh, the only reason I'm using it is because um, I have some. And it does pretty well the same thing that uh, you get with um, linseed oil. You can paint linseed oil over poppy oil and you can paint poppy oil over linseed oil. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's just basically oil. The only thing that you'll get with uh, poppy oil is that it will dry slightly faster. So I've got some um, Payne's Grey on my palette. And uh, be because it's dry, because the actual painting is dry, I can do anything over the top. Doesn't matter what I do, I can't actually uh, make a mistake because I'll just take it off if it doesn't look right. So to get perspective, darkness hits the eye before light. Uh, it's just one of those things. And if I add more red up here, that will also bring that forward. Red and black are the same color wavelength. And if you, so you can use either, you can use dark in the foreground like this to bring that forward. And you can use dark at the top to bring that forward. If I add blue down there, everything will start to go away even more than it appears to go away in that, in the picture as it stands. So this is, this is Payne's gray with uh, more, more oil than paint. And if I just put some dark cloudy shapes up here, and don't forget when I say when I'm painting clouds, 
uh, if you watch particularly my latest video, I think, I've got a feeling I mention it on that um, quite a lot, is that I don't think to myself, right, now I'm painting clouds, I've got to do this, this and this. You've got to forget that what you're doing is you're applying paint to a surface and just pushing it around. And one of the big tricks of oil painting is not what you're putting on necessarily, but what you're not putting on and also knowing when to stop. So I could put a whole load of Payne's Gray up there pretty well straight from the tube with no oil added. In fact, I'll just show you how strong it is when you do that, because it, it's one of the closest things to black. It's like, you know, it looks like black. Um, the only thing you'll notice, if I have a bit of white paper and I put some of that on my finger and wipe it on the paper, you'll get a very slight, um, a little blue sheen to it, which is why I use it. Uh, I don't like just dead black. But, um, and strangely enough, the only time that I used to use black in any of my painting was when I was painting portraits. And uh, you, you need black in portraits, particularly the style that I was doing, which was um, reproduction old paintings. Um, they used black for the shadows, obviously. Uh, but when you, when skin, so in other words, there's, there's a bit of skin there. So, uh, and excuse, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a very lacerated arm at the moment. Uh, the cat got tickled a little bit, a little bit too much and um, took out her revenge on me. Um, the shadows at the bottom here, down there, contain black. But it doesn't really matter what sort of light you're in, there will be black there. And also, um, uh, faces, if you have a, a, a person's face, the shadows where, where the skin is leaving your cheek and going under your jawline tends to contain black and also green. If you don't add the black and the green, it just doesn't look quite right. And we can go into that later too if you want. So as you can see, I'm not actually um, as I said, I'm not actually painting clouds. What I'm doing, I'm just putting, putting some color on. And oh, the, what I was saying a second ago about um, you, you can't go wrong. I'll just demonstrate how wrong you can't go. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> it sounds quite surreal. This is how wrong you can't go. So supposing I'm standing here painting away and I've got this brush and somebody talks to me and I go, like that, and oops, I've completely ruined that part of the painting. Well, if it was wet, it would be a slight problem, but because it's dry, and this is the thing I keep telling people, um, do, your, do a certain stage of your painting, then stop. Put the uh, final touches on when everything's dry, because then you can just take it off and the painting that you've got underneath just won't change. So there we are, that's gone. That is left a slight stain here, but I could get that, I could get rid of that using a bit of oil on the paper, uh, which I'll do because I said I could. I think it's quite important to show people when you, when you say stuff, um, you shouldn't leave people wondering whether you're actually being totally upfront about it. But let's see, if I put some oil on it, I can go back to the um, original color. I'm not too concerned about this, but because um, it's just it's one of those sort of paintings. It's it, funny enough, it's not necessarily what I would call a, a a finished painting. It's not something I would sell because it's something I'm using to um, demonstrate, and um, if necessary, you know, completely ruin just to show how you can unruin. So anyway, right. So we have got this grey up here. Quite nice, I suppose. Um, the brush now has grey on it, but as I do this, I hope you can see, just keep checking that you can actually see what I'm doing. But as long as I do this, you see the paint's coming off. So that's that bit. And then a few wipes later, of course, I've chosen a particularly strong colour, but that's clean enough now for me to pick up some blue on it. it looks, it looks dark, you know. 
But if I put that on there now and do this, hardly anything comes off. Okay. So don't be afraid of the paint. I think that's what I'm trying to get over there. Uh, so if I pick up a little bit of blue, let's see what we can do with blue. Now, I need the blue to be quite strong because this contains a lot of yellow and I don't want to uh, make too much green in the sky. So let's say we're going to have a little tiny bit of blue sky in there. See, now I can put it on the colour that's dry, which is basically yellow. And again, I'm not, I'm not actually thinking cloud. I'm just sort of making shapes that look balanced uh, uh, as if they connect across the painting. You see, I could stop there, but it would look a bit odd, wouldn't it? It's got, um, it's just a bit odd. That's the only way I can describe it. And in fact, what I painted is an aeroplane. There's the wing. There's the front end. There's the tail. There's the other wing over there. And then you could even put wheels on it. So there's a blue plane flying that way. You've always got to watch out for those. They pop up everywhere. Never blue planes before, but you know, all kinds of other stuff. So I've got these rocks. So I want the blue to go behind the rocks. Now I could go up to the edge of the rock and just stop, like so. Okay. Um, I, I, I would find that a little bit sort of, I don't know, too, uh, what's the word? It will make it look too finished too soon. So what I'll do is I'll just go over the edges a bit. And let's just have a little bit of blue there. Okay, very, very loose. A few little bits across here. And maybe we go up to the edge of that cliff there, I suppose. Why not? See, what I'm not doing is this. Okay, you won't see me doing that. Because uh, A, I'm not being a realist, I'm trying to keep it lively. And I think paint looks more interesting when it's not quite perfect. Because it is, you have to remember it's a painting, it's not, it's not, it's not real. <laughs> and I've really got to stop and work on my uh, try not to sound condescending, but you obviously know it's not real. Anyway, so there we are. Push a little bit on there just for the heck of it. So, um, piece of paper, the alternative brush. Now you can start going around this and taking the paint back and making what's there look interesting against the, the actual blue, trying to make them work together. And I'm sure you've all heard the saying, local color. Local color in a painting is very important. It's where you have exactly what I'm doing here. And instead of a hard, crisp line, you have a, you have a sort of no go, a demilitarized zone where it's neither this nor this. There's a little bit, it's a bit, bit fuzzy in between the two. But uh, you know, it, just have to believe me, it does actually make a painting look more painterly and interesting. So the color that is here becomes local on that, and the color that is here becomes local on the blue. Um, people like Monet and um, most, well, pretty well, yeah, all French Impressionists did this because uh, they just knew it worked. They, they understood color in a completely different way to the way, you know, the traditional way that people used to paint. Thank goodness. So there, you see, I can push, I can push the blue into the, some of the colors around it there. If I want, I can just take that all off and start again, but uh, I'll keep going. So, oh, and for blending, you see, now you don't necessarily have to have a brush for blending. If you roll up the paper, so you've got sort of a nice flat bit like this, and you start to do, you see now, let me just check. Right, see, that's got quite a hard line to it, that little bit of blue there. But if you work in a circular motion around that area, you can blend the two together very subtly so that they just literally fade. And there's not, obviously, you know, no brushes touching that, so there won't be brush marks. But you have to watch what you're doing. You've got to keep an eye on it and know when to actually stop. But the effects that you can get are quite 
spectacular. You know, this dark cloud here, and well, actually, yeah, I quite like it. I'm actually trying to paint according to what I'm seeing here. So I'm looking at that, and I'm also looking over here at my computer screen to see exactly what you can see. And I can see, uh, uh, and because the computer screen is a little further away, I can see things on that that I don't see on here because I'm standing to the side. If I was in the front, I'd probably notice it more. But what I can see, just compositionally, is that there's this dome shape here, uh, which I don't want. I would prefer if I could just take some of that up into there. Could leave a bit on the cliff there, maybe. Don't know. See, it takes that bit of cliff further away than this because it's got blue in it. It's almost like round the corner, and there's a, another sort of section of this, whatever it is, that disappears and tails off around the corner. I quite like that. I can, I can um, increase that effect by just putting a bit more blue just there. So now we have this rock structure in front with the blue one slightly behind. Yeah, reasonably nice effect. And up there again, there's that shape there. I need to sort of lose that a little bit, not completely. I just, uh, you know, I'm treating it as composition and not cloud. If you if you are, are a new painter and you've never painted um, skies and clouds before, there's a, a big possibility that. Um, a, you'll end up using your palette knife. Here we are, I found it. Um, you'll end up being too careful. And then it'll go wrong because you're being too careful. And then that will set back your painting career. Uh, it may just set it back minutes, but it could set it back years because you may get it in your head. You might think, oh, everything. Every, every time I put paint on something, it looks terrible. You know, you have to try and sort of live without that, um, that feeling. So just be a little bit, um, a little bit brazen. Right, I don't like that, obviously. I mean, who would? It's just wrong. So I'll uh, just mute that down there a little bit at the top. Uh, for the new people, uh, there are quite a few new newbies here today. Um, I always tend to mention certain artists and. Uh, I do it on my videos too. I'm just sorry, I'm just working on a bristle there. I think it's a bristle anyway. Yeah, there we go. Right. Um, if you think this sky looks a bit wild, just go and look at paintings by William Turner and uh, then tell me whether you think this looks wild. Uh, bearing in mind he was painting. Uh, when was he painting? Do you know, I always have trouble with his dates, but it's probably 17, late 1700, somewhere in there, early 18s maybe. But anyway, he was actually one of the first, if not the first, impressionistic painting before the word impressionism was even used. So his skies are quite crazy, and people thought he was totally bonkers at the time. And they you might have noticed there, there was a hair. Um, uh, and I do get that a lot. I get bristles that uh, detach. Even with expensive brushes, it happens. But of course, I use really cheap brushes. Um, they're, they're just as good for what I need. Um, but if you, get a, if you get a bristle, you probably can't see it. But rather than sort of um, faffing around, working on trying to get it off carefully, do what it takes, even if it's to scraping the paint like that. Uh, and there is a mark there. It doesn't matter what I do with the camera here, you won't see it, but you just sort of rub over it and it'll go away. Now then, the bit I really enjoy, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do down here. Might leave, in fact, I might leave that. I quite like the, the glow there. I'm just going to calm down some of these blue bits. And in fact, I'm going to do that, even though it's going across the rocks. 
this is this is I think this is all part of not getting attached to your painting. In other words, I know I'm pulling the blue across this rock structure here, but as I'm doing it, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, well, funny enough, quite like the effect. You know, I'm not trying to reproduce this sort of, uh, well, probably, well, it's certainly an American look type landscape. You don't get that, <laughs> you don't get that in the UK. Um, which is a bit of a shame, really, because it's quite nice. But um, it, I'm not after realism. I'm after um, uh, an emotion in a picture. In other words, when people look at it, I want them to think, well, it's got a nice dreamy look, and it draws you in because it's sort of fascinating. That's what I'm after, I suppose, fascinating and drama. See, the fact that I've left some blue on this is really, it sort of adds to the structure of the thing, it gives it more of a curve, I suppose. I could, I could exaggerate that with a few white bits or, you know, gray bits in there with a palette knife, which I might do in a minute. But uh, before I get onto that, I want to just sort of show you how I can liven up the sky now with a little bit of white. Now, if this was all wet, it's not awfully wet. There is obviously the blue is the wettest thing on there. Um, then I would probably apply the white with a palette knife because that lets me put the paint on top of the blue. If I apply it with a brush, the bristles dig into the blue. So the white will immediately mix with the blue and it will become less than white. It'll be, it'll be muted. Now, I don't necessarily want that. I can get away with it because I can be quite um, light handed when I need to because of practice. I've done it many times. Um, so I might um, have it. Oh, just something there. I just want to show you this before I get onto the sky. I just wiped a bit more blue, and you can just about see, I think, through the blue that there's a bit of rock there. So if I put a bit of paper on it and push like that. I can bring that bit of rock back slightly stronger. It's not strong, strong. It is here, but not on the screen, unfortunately. But I can just sort of retrieve it. So as I was saying, um, the sky, let me just get rid of that hair there. Some of, some of these hairs aren't, aren't the brushes falling apart, it's um, the cat. whose name, for, the, for those of you, you might, well, if you watch my videos, you might have heard me talk about Tiger Lily, but I'm thinking of changing her name to Slasher. I mean, it's incredible what a cat can do to you in a few seconds. And um, in fact, I'll tell you what, it wasn't me tickling her that did this. It was me trying to stop her bite her electrical cable. You know, the French national grid power, about 240 volts, I think. You don't want that through your teeth. Actually, you wouldn't want that through anything. I think. Now, the brush has got blue on it. Right, so um, I haven't cleaned it with anything. All I'm doing uh, between painting is just this, just sort of taking off the sort of mother load. Because uh, if I add a bit of white to that, straight from the tube, Okay, and I just keep it on one corner, like so. I can start to add in a little bit of cloud. Now, you'll, the clouds at the moment are catching red from I don't know, a sun, sunset or a sunrise, or depending on your point of view. So the light is probably coming up from that area there. And the thing also with clouds, a good thing to remember is that um, uh, light, when you paint clouds, you don't have to religiously say the light comes from there or from there because they're all generally um white clouds you know you, you get these colors reflecting on them in the morning and the evening but um the light source may be quite strong down there but when the light's coming up here through the clouds well it's actually the other side of the clouds obviously because the sun's a long way away but it bounces from cloud to cloud so don't religiously say this side of all my clouds has to be dark and this side has to be white. You will, you'll make a very boring sky if you do that. 
So just sort of do what you think is right. So let's, let's have a little stab here at um, a few white clouds. Doesn't matter what they look like at the moment. It's just uh, composition. I'm after sort of what looks right rather than what is right. See, there's enough there to show that the cliff is in front of the clouds. You don't have to actually go all the way around, just enough to suggest it like so. Okay, so let's have a few more. Now it's starting to turn blue because I worked in the blue area, which is okay. That's uh, not a problem. If I, if I don't want it, uh, let me show you what I, I'll do when I don't, if I don't want it. I'll find a um, palette knife. <clears throat> and a little bit of white paint. I, um, it, I say a little, it's actually not that little. There's quite a lot of paint on that. But if I now start to push this around, let's say we've got some high stratos. I think they're stratos. Just a few up there, just to sort of. But don't 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 be predictable, you know. Like the reason I'm doing all this is so that I I don't get predictability. I just get shapes that are reasonably positioned. So that's all of the white paint pretty well there. Okay, so I'm not going to overdo this sky thing. Uh, and I'm not going to use this brush now. I'm going to put that carefully there so I don't drop it on the floor like the last one I tried to do that with. Um, I'm going to get a um, another brush which has got just a stain on it. So I'm just checking the bristles, make sure they don't come out. Okay, so this is this is basically a dry brush. And all I'm going to do is this. I've had a, a flood of people, <laughs> uh, and I mean a flood of people. It's interesting how, how it goes with the comments that I get on YouTube. People saying, well, I've tried to do your sky with this blurry thing, but I just end up with a mess. So they, they want to know the secret, and the secret, there is no secret. It's just um, it's just a very light touch. Bearing in mind, there's not a lot of paint under the white, okay? I put a bit of gray there. Here I put a lump of blue, uh, but the blue is not much of a problem with the white um, because the white is pretty well from the straight from the tube and the blue has got a bit of oil in it. So as so long as I skim my brush over it, lightly enough just to touch the white and not have too much of an impact on the blue, I can blur the uh, white clouds without mushing up the colors too much. And it literally, you know, like an airplane, into land, skim it and then come off. So in other words, I don't go wallop and then drag. It's, um, it's literally, as I said, just like an airplane. So if that's the surface of the painting, I come into land carefully along and then up so there's no wallop, drag, and up. It's almost like a, a soft sort of bounce, I suppose. So looking at looking at composition here now, how I've got this smack in the middle pretty well. Uh, and it's two in the middle for me. It needs to um, it needs to be a, a different shape. So I'm going to um, get a little bit more white. And in fact, let's turn it into something that comes down that way, like so. And then a few swipes of this one. Now my latest um, YouTube video, I've got the painting down here, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, because I'm going to do something on here that I did on that. In fact, I'll just grab it quickly. But if you look at the um, clouds on this one, 
Okay, so you've got a little bit of landscape down there and you've got all these really stark cloud effects, which is reasonably realistic. It's quite, quite striking uh, because it, it's hard not for it to be striking because it's on, um, what is it? Ultramarine blue and Payne's gray for the sky. So I'm just putting white on that. It's gonna, it's gonna really jump out at you. So um, what I did to get those clouds, I, I barely used a brush in fact. I'm just gonna show you what I did. Um, let's just get some more white here. Um, that you can do amazing things with a palette knife. In fact, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Hopefully is focused. Right. So um, this area here. So what you can do is you can put uh, white onto a picture like this. Right? Mustn't be afraid of the paint. Always remember that. You know, there's a great, there, as you can see, there's a great lump of paint there. And you may think, well, how is that going to look like a cloud? Well, it won't to start with. But then again, omelettes don't look like omelettes when you first break an egg. So you need to sort of get into it and make the paint and the palette knife work together. In fact, if you paint clouds like this, you won't have brush marks You're, because obviously there's no brush. But you can get some interesting sky shapes, uh, cloud, not sky shapes, cloud shapes quite smooth and quite interesting. Now, the, obviously the paint's on there and it's really quite thick. So if I just do a couple of those, okay, so that's now smoothed it out a bit. The other thing I was gonna show you is, and you may not be able to see it, do I need to move the camera? This back there. Yeah, let's move the camera. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I'm hoping it'll show up, but there's quite a buildup of paint there. It's quite thick. Now you could leave it like that. It's, it would look okay. But the other thing you can do is um, clean off your palette knife. <clears throat> and then just squash it. Squash it and push it. And don't forget to take the paint off the side of the picture because, as you know, that's where clouds go when they're not in your painting. So that I've taken the peak off the paint and then I can just do a couple of quick drags over it just to give it a little bit more uh, smoothness. Now you can probably see these lines here. Now that, all that is, is the um, brush marks on the gesso. And you can leave it if you want. I don't mind it personally, but if you want it to go away, um, you can just do that a little bit over it with the corner of your brush. And it pretty well vanishes. Still be there a little bit, but as I said, I, I don't mind because I, I actually quite like that effect. Just soften the top of that one a bit. So I hope this has um, helped a little bit. I haven't finished yet, but just, just so that you know that clouds, you know, they're not that daunting really, as long as you don't think about it too much. Think of it as paint and not clouds. Right, so I'm gonna zoom back and do a bit more work at the top. Right, so let's see. What do I want to do? So I might take it just a step further with the clouds. I'll show you the other thing you can do. I mean, it, you saw me um, uh, smoothing out clouds with a piece of paper. So I'm gonna just do that a little bit more. Because uh, as much as these sort of could look quite nice up here, these little sort of dotted bits, um, 
Yeah, I don't quite like that. So what I could do, so that they don't look too dotted. And again, working in a sort of spiral motion is just sort of connect them up a little bit to each other. It just, I think it just looks a bit better. Uh, sometimes when you, um, when you're working out how a painting is going to look, in other words, you, you know, you're continually working on the um, composition. Um, you, you sort of start to know what just looked wrong and what looks right. And it's hard to say why a thing looks wrong. Um, it's just not right, I suppose. That's <laughs> or probably not awfully helpful, but you just get a feel for it, you know? I want, I want the feeling of the wind blowing through the sky, so I want movement in it. The way you get movement is how you put down your first marks. There has to be a, a flow to it. Maybe I'll explain that in a minute. Face to face. So here, you see, now I put all this, this do you see how clouds just sort of appear. The thing is, the reason they're appearing and looking cloudy um, is because, I don't know, what is it because? Is it because I've done it thousands of times or is it because of the way I move my hand? Interesting question. It's, um, I don't know, it could be years of just looking at the sky. Uh, composition again, a little bit on composition. These clouds here, so only a small thing, but um, I've got the painting reasonably square within the frame, but there's a there's a slight dropping off feeling, you know? I don't like that in a painting. Uh, I tend to like things to come to the edge and have a bit of a rise to them. Helps keep the eye in. What else can I do there? I can strengthen the rock here just to bring it back in front of the um, cloud and by dragging my nail through it I, I've taken off some of the blue here and the grey rather just to reveal what was underneath so that light bit just a little thing like that you see can bring that in front of the clouds without it it tend to sit back um, what else can we do compositionally I think we should probably connect these two because so it doesn't look like a puff of smoke that's stuck to the side of the cliff. Just connect them a little bit. Now, when this is dry, I could then go over this again. You can go over it, over it, and over it. You know, this is basically glazing, I suppose, what I'm doing here. It's a funny thing, glazing. Um, glazing is just the application of paint on a painting that is, uh, that is dry. So, um, and it's extremely helpful, as, as you can see, you know, the sky suddenly. There's a little bit more, uh, well, certainly a little bit more cloud in it, but maybe, maybe it's slightly more interesting. Um, but it, it means, you know, like this here, see, you know, I, just, I just brought a little bit more of that yellow back. I think it probably needs it. I could bring a bit more back there, take it up to the edge of that cloud just a bit more. Do it in stages. Do something, stop, stand back, assess it if it looks good. If it looks really well, if it looks good, make it slightly better. If it doesn't look good, backtrack. Don't be afraid to take paint off. Just, it's quite acceptable to remove paint from a painting because the end result is the painting. So it doesn't matter what you did to get there, as long as you got there. Now then, I need to do anything else to the sky. It seems it seems to have a certain movement to it. Um, so I'm reasonably happy. Just take that up there a bit. Uh, if I wanted to add a bit more structure to this, I suppose I could just show you that, and I'll do it with a palette knife. So um, I think maybe that's that for that bit, right? So okay, let's get on to um, what would I do for a bit of structure. Um, looking at the colours here, I can probably get what I want without adding yellow. I don't want to add yellow, um, not straight yellow anyway. I'm going to use uh, 
yellow ochre, which I'm sure you all know is that colour. Funnily enough, on the screen, it, it looks quite green, but um, of course it isn't. Little hint, if you're buying oil paints and you live in a place where you have this sort of landscape, you may be tempted to buy Naples yellow. Don't. Naples yellow is this colour, which is the colour I just showed you with white added. So save yourself some money. Don't buy Naples yellow. Just buy yellow ochre. And if you want Naples yellow, put a bit of white in it and then you'll save um, a fortune over the years. Just going to move the camera again. And in a bit more. A bit of focus. You will be amazed. Uh, I remember when I first painted this. You'll be amazed when I upload a photograph in a minute of what it really looks like. It's, um, it's not like what you're seeing. Okay, so I've got this structure and there are some marks here showing through. In other words, there's this light bit just there. Uh, there's uh, a bit at the bottom here, which is sort of going up the picture of it. We've got that, which is a bit weak at the moment, so I might do something with that. Um, uh, what else we've got? So we've got that, 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 that. Yeah, there's a few streaks in there you're probably not even seeing much of. And there's a little hint of one there. So if you get a palette knife and you've got some of this colour on it, you can start to sort of build in the uh, structure and texture by putting the knife on and turning it. As you turn it, you put more paint on the surface. When you go back that way, you, you are putting less colour on. In other words, just the edge, you can see it's just, in fact, it put thin lines on there, but they're so thin, you can't see them. If I turn the palette knife a little bit that way and do the same thing, you'll see marks appear like so. So, uh, and I, I tend to not sort of just dab, I, I, I tend to sort of use this ironing motion where uh, I have more control and you can drag it a bit and you can slide it up and down. Now, what I'm actually putting on here is not how it will look, okay? This is, this is, think of this when you're doing your own paintings. Almost everything you do when you're starting painting is, is a rehearsal for what, what it will end up like. So I'm rehearsing going up and down with my hand here, and then I'm turning the um, palette knife just to deposit a bit more paint on the painting. So, so that I can, uh, as, as we just discussed, I can add structure. And so long as you, uh, there's lots of little things that sometimes I forget to tell people. I've done it so long, it seems like, wh why doesn't everyone else know? Which of course is not a good habit to get into if you're trying to teach people. But um, when you have an object like this, there's a dark side, and then there's the sort of intermediate bit, and then a light side. So, and that, that will be pretty standard with big structures like this. There's gonna be a light side and a dark side. And um, just think of Star Wars. So, but it works also if you have a light side, a dark middle, and a light. Uh, we'll get into that another time, I think. But that's like, um, would you actually be able to see it with my hand? Probably not. You can see dark either side of my hand because of the, the lights that I've got in here. But um, it's why when you go to art college, they have you drawing spheres and cones and pyramid shapes so that you start to understand structures and how, how light interacts. Um, I'll try and explain that in a minute when I stop painting. So I'm going to be quite bold about what I'm doing here. Just do that, I think, and then I'll just sort of see how that looks. Okay, so it's obviously, at the moment, it's at the sort of brazen stage. It's at the stage when you're teaching where you think, how, how the heck am I going to get out of this? Kidding, of course. Um, just looking for another palette knife. Okay, so here's one I haven't used for a while. This is a square one, as you can see. Great for um, rocks, actually. 
not all rocks. It's, it's, we're very good for the sort of rocks we get in England, which is, and parts of France, which is chalk, uh, because chalk um, tends to have cuts through it and horizontal and vertical lines. And uh, but I could probably use it for this. So if I drag this over that a little bit and then move the thing sideways and up and down a bit, And this still isn't finished. This is just this is just me trying to get some um, shapes in there. And the next thing I'm going to do when I actually there we are, I'm going to get a piece of paper. So there, there's lots of ways of doing what I'm just about to show you. This is just one of them. So if I get some paper from my printer. So standard English and European paper size A4, which is eight and a quarter inches by 11 and three quarter inches or uh, 210 millimeters by 297. I'm sure everyone will remember that. Um, if you put that on the painting and then just sort of do that. It mustn't move. So my thumb is putting a lot of pressure on that. Okay, so finger at the bottom. You don't see much, but it's taken the peaks off the paint. So there's, that's what's ended up on the paper. And the next thing, always remember this, a lot of stuff is done in layers. So the next thing I would do now is I would start to actually smudge it a little bit. Use my fingernail too to actually just cut through it a bit. Deliberately exaggerated, just to give you an idea. I could probably, um, it probably would help if I just added a bit of red to that. If that I'm going to, just, when I say red, I don't mean like Japanese red, uh, I mean red ochre. I just happen to have a bit on my palette. So there's hardly any on this. This is like the thinnest film of paint. Quite interesting, when I hold it down here, it looks purple. It changes color when I hold it up there. Interesting. Okay, so with this, I'm just gonna sort of put, and it will go a long way. You can put in most colors into yellow ochre and white. Um, and, and you can lose the, uh, you can change the color quite easily. That's what I'm trying to say. You might leave it like that. And if my other camera is ready to operate, well, it's the time. So it's about an hour's worth of painting. I'm probably, I don't know that I've got the energy to actually paint a new painting. Um, let me just check this camera disc. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I think the next next lesson won't be a finishing off one like this. It will actually be, uh, you know, from scratch. Which I think um, new people possibly might prefer because, you know, you didn't see me make this painting, uh, although you will because I'm going to upload it tomorrow. Um, and I will send um, links to everyone. It'll be on YouTube. And something else I'm going to do, though, in the future, I'm going to take a, a lot of these lesson videos um, and just put them on YouTube. Uh, but not immediately. I mean, the thing is that patrons will get to see it first. You'll get to see it first. 
uh, but the general public won't see them for, I don't know, maybe a month or two. Um, but out of necessity, what was the book design work disappearing, uh, I've got to start, um, <laughs> I hate saying it, but I've got to start thinking of the painting side, more of an industry. So there we are. I'm not quite happy with that corner there, but I suppose it might be all right. It's okay for now. So there we are. So there's a bit of sky and a bit of structure. It's got a little bit of Lord of the Rings about it. Maybe it needs a big eye on the top up here. So um, I'm going to pull the, pull the um, camera back a bit. Hands are wet. Thanks. Uh, go back. So it's changed a bit from when we started. Obviously, the sky's got a little bit more going on. And just for the people who like to see the palette, um, my palette is an, an ongoing thing. <laughs> How can I explain it? It's um, probably not going to get cleaned much. I'm going to start probably uh, just painting over it. And, uh, so that's what it looks like today. Now, some of that was left from the last video I did. And um, so there we are. Isn't that a mess? Anyway, back to the painting. Um, and like I said, I'm going to photograph that in a moment. So if you want, you can try asking me questions while I take the photograph and I'll try and concentrate and uh, give you any answers that I can. So there we are. That's how it's ended up. Let's just check the focus. There we go. Right. OK. So I'm going to stop the recording so that anything you say or I say cannot be used in evidence against you. <laughs>